it definitely looks worse than it is. Ow! <laughs> Ow! So if you're wondering how I got here, let's go back to the beginning of today. I'm actually going to move this curtain out of the way because it's really distracting me from reaching this corner. I've also closed the blinds. So, ow, I can't let her do this. I need a set of steps. Or a hammer. All I want to do is just pop that out of there. God, it's really stuck in there quite tight. So what do you reckon so far? Did I injure myself trying to hammer my curtain rail out of the bracket? Nope. Try again. Out of the end, so I can move it across. That was a lot of work. Right. I want to remind myself of the measurements I need to take for these two shelves. Because the walls are a bit wonky, they might actually be slightly different from each other. As you may recall, I also set these shelves ever so slightly further back than this one because I realised this was a little bit too far out for the shutters. It doesn't affect that particular shelf because this is below the shutters but these needed to be set back a little bit further. When it comes to doing the corners I totally forgot this hack. <laughs> for the corners you would usually have a specific tool, I think it's called a bevel tool or something similar. I'll put it down in the description so you know what you're looking for. I don't have one of those, but what I do have are two bits of card. Now this is a DIY hack that I've shared before and I completely forgot about it when it came to doing this bit of work. All you need to do is get two pieces of paper. Card is a bit easier to use. Put a paper clip in the corner and then you have a way of working out what the angle is. If it's not 90 degrees, perhaps it will be slightly out or in. Let's see. Gosh, that corner is pretty much 90 degrees exactly. Let's try the other corner. I think this is the more wonky one. Aha. All you do once you've found the right angle, hold it, get a piece of tape, and just tape that there. When I go downstairs in a minute, I can draw this angle on my piece of wood and that's how you get the correct angle. That I'll do at 90 degrees and this, I will do that angle and go from there. <laughs> that's what we've got to. We get some tape. Okay, now I don't have to hold it. I didn't actually have a tape measure upstairs so I'm just gonna use a tape measure that I had. Uh, this is a tape measure. Tape measure? Is this also called a tape measure? My brain is hurting. Okay. It looks like you're about to start doing DIY in that flowy dress. That seems like a bad idea. Is that how you injured yourself? Nope, guess again. I want to start with a flat edge, so I'm just going to cut off the very edge of this so that I can measure from this flat edge. I'm going to turn this piece of wood over because there's a couple of circular, uh, I don't even know what to call these, they're like little divots. There must have been imperfections in the wood that were replaced with these circular pieces of wood um, during manufacture. Because of that I'm actually going to turn this piece over so that those can't be seen, they'll be inside of the shelf rather than on the top where it would be visible. Here I adjusted my circular saw jig to 35.5 centimetres because that's the depth that I need for the shelf. This means that I can cut the shelf and get a completely straight line. This is another option if you don't want to get a table saw but you still want to get straight lines on larger pieces of wood. Once 
Once I'd penciled in the correct shape for this corner, I measured the front to make sure that it was going to be the right width. Now we get to see if my measuring technique is good or terrible. It's a little bit snug. I think I need to take a small amount off. I probably measured it maybe a couple of millimetres too big, but the shape is spot on. Let me show you. There it needs to move back about an inch, but it's consistently an inch across the length. And then it's flat against the wall there. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I won't even need to get the circular saw out to cut off that extra bit because it's so minor that I'll be able to do it with the sander. I need to sand down these edges anyway because, oh, excuse me, because they're quite rough. But what I will do, I'm going to mark the areas that are having the most contact with the wall because I can give extra special attention to those areas as I sand down. I sanded, I brought it back up and it was a perfect fit. And you'll notice a change of clothing. Just before I did this, I decided to change out of my flowy dress. This is because I wouldn't usually DIY in something that has lots of excess fabric because there's a risk of it getting caught up in some of the tools. It also means that I ruin all of my nice clothes. That dress was from Ralph Lauren and we just don't need to ruin that. But here's how I did injure myself. It definitely looks worse than it is. Ow! <laughs> Ow! So as you can see, I've got a slight graze here on my nose. This was from my sander. I'm going to show you how this just happened. So this is where I was just working. And as you can see, this piece of wood is at a bit of a funny angle. It wasn't tightened in this gap very well, so it moved slightly. A belt sander like this likes to be nice and flat on the surface. But as I was holding this, it came in at a bit of an angle. Because the wood was not fully secure, it moved and that caused this to bounce. Obviously this goes around very fast, so it's quite a powerful machine. It's good to have two hands on it. I probably also wasn't holding it quite as tightly as I needed to be. And a combination of those different factors meant that it bounced off of the wood and kicked back. The other thing was that I was standing a little bit too close, looking to see where I wanted to sand. And so my face was a little bit too close to it. Because of that, it jumped back and just caught me on the nose. And I'm sharing this because I've obviously been doing DIY for a very long time, but it just goes to show how easy it can be when you're not paying quite enough attention to what you're doing. This was easily avoidable. I should have made sure that the wood was secure in between the, on, on the bench. I should also have made sure that I was holding the sander securely and I should have made sure that I wasn't standing too close to it. So this is quite minor, but it could definitely have been worse. So sharing this for you here in case this helps you in your journey to learning how to use a belt sander. I repositioned the wood and made sure that it was secure on the working bench. I then secured the bench with my foot, made sure I was holding the sander with two hands and used it flat on the edge. And most importantly, I didn't get my face involved. So this is where I got to today. I have the two shelf tops completed. I did one of the bottom ones, but there's a massive hole in it. So I'm actually going to buy some more plyboard. Uh, well, actually this is MDF. I'm gonna buy some more MDF to do these two bottom bits. So again, didn't still manage to completely finish. I just caught a glimpse of my face. I look so ridiculous. Still wasn't able to quite finish this today because I'm missing some of the materials. But once I pick those up, this is going to be really quite quick to finish. I can't take myself seriously. What is that? <laughs> and here's the thing. We all make mistakes from time to time. And if you want to learn more about DIY, the good, the bad and the ugly, don't forget to subscribe.